Welcome to Parent Quick Smarts. Today we are going to be digging deep into addition and subtraction concepts for first grade. This is the first unit of the year and sets the stage for the types of problems students will be exposed to throughout the year. When you are in school, you most likely memorize the basic facts through time test and drill and kill worksheets with little understanding of what the concept of addition and subtraction actually are. Your child will be learning the meaning of addition and subtraction through hands-on modeling, making connections to mathematical symbols and using them to write equations that represent the problems, and using appropriate operations during problem solving. We are moving beyond just memorization of facts to include a deeper understanding of these two operations. Now let's take a few minutes to look at the different types of problems your child will learn. The first problems we will address will be add two problems. Two bunnies sat on the grass. Three more bunnies hopped there. How many bunnies are there now? In this problem, the result is unknown and students can count two plus three more is five bunnies. In the next add two problem, two bunnies were sitting on the grass. Some more bunnies hopped there. Then there were five bunnies. How many bunnies hopped over to the first two? In this problem, we know the amount we started with, but we do not know how many more came, which is the change. Students will be able to count from two bunnies up to five to determine the change. Our last add to problem, some bunnies were sitting on the grass, three more bunnies hopped there, then there were five bunnies. How many bunnies were on the grass before? In this problem, the start is unknown. Students have to work backwards to determine that since three bunnies came and the end result was five, there must have been two bunnies to start with because two plus three is five. Now let's examine some take from problems. The first problem, five apples were on the table. I ate two apples. How many apples are on the table now? Since we know how many, how many apples we started with and we know the change, we can find the unknown result by simply subtracting five minus two to get three. In the second problem, five apples were on the table. I ate some apples, then there were three apples. How many apples did I eat? Here, we know how many we start with and how many we have at the end, but we don't know the change. So students will need to determine what amounts changed when subtracting five minus two equals three. In the last problem, some apples were on the table. I ate two apples, then there were three apples. How many apples were on the table before? Here, the amount we start with is unknown, but we know the change and how many apples we have at the end. In this problem, students should be thinking some number, take away two, is the same as three. Now let's look at put together, take apart problems. These problems are different because there is no action, such as apples being eaten or bunnies hopping to join a group. Three red apples and two green apples are on the table. How many apples are on the table? There are three red apples and two green apples, so three plus two equals five. In the next problem, five apples are on the table. Three are red, and the rest are green. How many apples are green? Here, we know the total is five, and part of those apples are red. We can determine the other part by finding the difference. Five minus three is equal to two green apples. 
The third problem is a little more open-ended. Grandma has five apples. Some are red and some are green. How many apples could be red? How many apples could be green? Here we know the total, but both parts or add-ins are unknown. Students should be able to come up with different combinations of numbers that add up to five. For instance, four plus one equals five, three plus two equals five, or two plus three equals five. How many more can you come up with? The last problem type is comparison problems. These are typically the most difficult types of problems because they involve the comparison of two quantities and the third amount doesn't actually exist because it's the difference between the two quantities. For example, Lucy has two apples. Julie has five apples. How many fewer apples does Lucy have than Julie? To solve this, students will cross off the amounts that are common and the answer will be the difference between the two amounts. In the next problem, Julie has three more apples than Lucy. Lucy has two apples. How many apples does Julie have? We know Julie and Lucy have two apples in common. And Julie has three more apples than Lucy. So Julie must have five apples. In the last problem, Julie has three more apples than Lucy. Julie has five apples. How many apples does Lucy have? In this problem, we know Julie has five apples, which is three more than what Lucy has. So students work backwards to find out that Lucy must have two apples. You can encourage your child to practice problem solving skills by asking questions such as, what operation did you choose and why? Tell me a story that goes with three plus two equals five. Sasha says that four minus three equals two. Do you agree or disagree? Why? What does it mean to add or what does it mean to subtract? Modeling problems with objects may also help children who are struggling. You can use any objects that you can find around the house, like beans, cotton balls, pennies, pasta, or cereal. It's important for children to see math concepts used in the real world. Using this picture, we could ask problems about the number of chairs in the row, what would happen if people came to sit in the chairs, what would happen if chairs were taken away or added to the row. From a very young age, children are always interested in money, whether it's earning it, which would be adding, or spending it, which would be subtraction. Taking a family trip to the park? You could ask your child how many fewer ducks there are than pigeons. A child's birthday party is another good time to compare ages. If Angel is six and her brother is or how many more candles are on Angel's cake? Thank you for joining us today on Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, take a look at these websites, thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mysdhc.org. See you next episode.